Hey Google, how old are you? Old enough to know not to judge a book by its cover, but young enough to find the poop emoji funny. Hello, I'm Zach and you're watching Bite Size. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up the Google Home Mini and how I integrated it into my smart home environment. The box comes wrapped in a thin plastic which can easily be pulled away. To open the box, I had to rip open a pull tab before I could take the device out. The Google Home Mini is available at the much more affordable price point of $49. This puts it in direct competition with the Amazon Echo Dot. What I like about the Home Mini is its fabric design and minimal button interface. Power is provided by a USB micro jack. I've read many complaints from people saying that they would rather have USB-C, but most of my cables are USB micro anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. There are two hidden buttons on the left and right side to adjust the volume. I will demonstrate that later in the video. It's worth mentioning that the Home Mini has a touch button in the middle of the speaker, but a software bug was discovered right before launch that caused the device to record its surroundings all the time. Obviously, this presents a privacy issue, and so Google disabled the button for now. The only physical switch on the Home Mini turns the microphone on and off for an additional layer of privacy. I think this is a great feature for smart devices. Finally, there is a small button on the bottom of the device. This is a factory reset button. Other than that, there is really no need for other input or outputs on the Google Home Mini, since you interact with it mostly using your voice. I followed the instructions in the quick start guide and plugged in the device. It took a few seconds for the Home Mini to boot up, but once it did, the app recognized the device and allowed me to start the setup process. Welcome to Google Home. To get started, download the Google Home app on a phone or tablet. I already have the Google Home app installed on my phone, so I skipped this step. The Home Mini will get your Wi-Fi credentials from your phone and connect to the same network. This was a very simple process. Once it finished setting up, I tested the two volume buttons that I had mentioned earlier and started asking some sample questions. Hey Google, is it going to rain today? No, rain is not expected tonight in Germantown. Hey Google, add flour to my shopping list. Okay, I've added flour to your shopping list. I found that it supports several languages too. Hey Google, today's But I didn't buy the Google Home Mini just for it to tell me the weather. What I'm interested in is home automation. Over several years, I've been setting up smart lights, thermostats, door locks, and motion sensors, among other things in my house. I want to be able to control these devices with the Google Home Mini. Hey Google, turn the lights off in the basement. You got it, turning two lights off. As you can see, the Google Home Mini has no problem connecting to and controlling my home automation devices. Hey Google, turn on the basement lights. Sure, turning on two lights. If you open up the app and click Home Control, you'll find that there are dozens of brands of supported devices. Here are my final thoughts on the Google Home Mini. It works great as a smart speaker. At $49, it does exactly the same thing as its siblings, but at a fraction of the cost. The only difference is the size of the speaker and the quality of sound. If you are wanting to use this as a sound system to play music from, I would recommend the original Google Home or the Google Home Max. I would like to have seen a 3.5 millimeter audio output jack for easy connection to a sound system, but since the Google Home connects to so many different smart audio devices, including any Chromecast device, I don't see this as a huge issue. Where I see the biggest value for the Home Mini is in a home automation setting. By having one of these devices in your main living area, you can control your entire house with your voice, and I find that pretty amazing. I've got several more cool projects on the way, including another home automation project, which is the Sonoff switch. It's a $5 smart Wi-Fi switch that's really easy to set up. I'm pretty excited to share that with you. If you like home automation projects, check out this playlist here where I have other videos of home automation. And if you missed my video last week, I made a Stranger Things message wall, which is pretty cool. If you're new to this channel, I do a lot of cool project videos like this. If that's something you're into, please consider subscribing and that way YouTube will start recommending you more videos like this. Thanks for watching.